All right, here we are, pre-calculus 30. I'm just gonna do a uh, chapter five review for you. So we're gonna go through the four sections in chapter five in pre-calculus 30. Chapter five is about trigonometric functions and their graphs and related problems. So 5.1, if you recall, 5.1 talks about graphing sine and cosine functions. So when we talk about sinusoidal functions, we're talking about uh, sine and cos. Uh, the reason why is because sine, as you know, kind of generally has a shape like this and cosine generally has a shape like this. And if you notice, they're really, they're really the same. The cos and sine are just shifted versions of each other. So sine and cos are both called sinusoidal graphs. So what are some of those uh, characteristics of sine and cos that we need to know? Well, we need to know that the period length for sine and for cos is both two pi, okay? So period length is two pi, right here, period two pi. You also need to know that for sine and for cos, the amplitude is one. Um, the minimum value is negative one, the maximum is one, so from the midline to an extreme point there would be one unit, that's what the amplitude is. So amplitude is one for both. Now for the sine, the y-intercept is uh, zero, and for cosine, the y-intercept is one. So sine starts at zero and ends at zero at one complete uh, you know, cycle, and cosine starts at one and ends at one for one complete cycle. Okay, when you start at x equals zero anyways. All right, so the uh, the domain is all real numbers. The range is from negative one to one. Uh, so there's a lot of similarities, but there are some differences. The amplitude, remember, is the absolute value of a. Um, if a is negative, that means it flips the, uh, the graph vertically. But when we're talking about amplitude, we always use absolute value, okay? So you would never have a negative one for an amplitude, just to recall. And really, really important, period length is 2 pi over b or 360 degrees over b. And it would be the absolute value of b as well. Period length doesn't have a direction or a sign, S-I-G-N, okay? All right, so that's 5.1. 5.2, we talk about transformations. I think this is where we really get into maybe the, the heaviest part of this chapter because transformations have to deal not only with, you know, transformations sliding left, right, which is the C value, uh, not only sliding up down, which is the D value, but now we're getting into stretches vertically and stretches horizontally. So stretches vertically is what the A value represents. And again, that's not too big of a deal. The amplitude is one normally for sine. If A is five, guess what? The amplitude is now five, no big deal. It pulls it up this way. If the A value is between zero and one, let's say it's 0 0.2, well then instead of going up to one, it goes up to 0 0.2, that's it, it's the amplitude. Um, the tricky part is the horizontal stretch or the uh, period length. But if you remember, if you remember that period length is two pi over b, that's going to really help you out. So if, if you isolate for b here, you know, flip those two around, um, two pi over the period length is what b is. So if you remember this is really, really important, that's gonna get you through a lot of uh, uh, trouble uh, when, you when it comes to uh, period length and stretches and stuff. So horizontal stretch, Remember, if b is greater than one, that means that um, that means that the period length is smaller, okay, than normal. So if this is two pi, if the period if the if b was two, then you would have half, okay, it would be half. And uh, if if uh, b was less than one between zero and one, then you've got a stretch, okay. So that's just an important thing to remember. Um, the the d value, like where's the midline? Well. If you take the average of the max and min values, the average, you add them together, divide by two, that's the D value, the average. So up, up here, this would be a max of three and a min of negative one. If you add those two, three plus negative one is two, divided by two is one. That's where the midline is, you see? That's what D is. Don't get this um, uh, mixed up with amplitude, right? Uh, amplitude from 1.1. From, uh, was the max minus the min value divided by two. That's amplitude. D value is max plus min divided by two. You might wanna jot that down and spend some extra time studying that. All right, the tangent function, the reason why the tangent function is uh, comes a little bit later in this chapter is because it's very different than the sine and cos, right? Sine and cos are very much the same, a lot of similar characteristics. The tangent graph is funny. It's got, first of all, the big thing is it's got these, uh, uh, asymptotes, okay, it's got asymptotes. And where do the asymptotes come from? Why is tan so strange? Well, if you consider over here on the right, I've got a little bit, a portion of a unit circle, I've got just the first quadrant here, right? 
And um, uh, let's see, this is the point right here. So for pi over four, the coordinates on the inner circle are root two over two, comma, root two over two. We know that the first coordinate is the cosine of pi over four. The second coordinate is the sine of pi over four. Now tangent sneaks in there, and remember tangent, uh, tan theta is sine theta over cos theta. And so if you take the sine value divided by the cos value, you get the tan value. So tan of pi over four is one. Let's go back to our graph here. So if you go over um, pi over four units, you go up one unit. That's why they have a point right there. Now what happens at pi over two? Well, pi over two, uh, what, here's sine, there's cos. So tangent is really defined as one divided by zero. Ooh, that's bad. One divided by zero, can't have that. So that's why it's an asymptote at pi over two. And of course, this is the general shape. One of the big things to remember for tan is that the period length is not two pi like sine and cos. The period length is only one pi. That's huge. You gotta remember that. And of course, you gotta remember these, um, these vertical asymptotes, okay? But those two things are really, really important. I wouldn't worry about too much other stuff here. Uh, y intercept is, um, you know, zero, and then pi and two pi and so on. And the uh, um, vertical asymptotes are in between those intercepts. So that's, that's uh, tangent, okay? And that's 5.3. 5.4, the final section, 5.4, talks about equations <clears throat> and graphs of all the trig functions, sine, cos, and tan. And of course, we can represent periodic phenomena, like, uh, you know, a tire spinning around. If there's a rock stuck in a tread of a tire, you know, how it goes up and down over time, you can represent that as a sinusoidal function. And a lot of the questions in your homework assignment uh, they help you to understand how to manipulate, just like this, point number two, adjust the amplitude, phase shift, vertical displacement, and so on for real-world problems. It's probably the toughest part of the whole chapter, right, right here, uh, doing application questions right there. Um, but uh, I guess this is important as well. Um, you do not have to have an angle as your uh, domain there, as the x, the independent variable. You can have time, right? Um, a lot of this stuff happens over time, and uh, you know, so it doesn't have to be necessarily angles on the x-axis there. Uh, solving equations is the same as we've done uh, all up to this point. If you have, um, um, if you have, let's say, uh, sine x equals two x plus one, well, then you're going to want to graph each of these and compare the graphs and find what the x-intercepts. Uh, or the points of intersection of two graphs, and if you combine them into one graph, like if you pull a sine over here, let's say, and you just have y equals uh, 2x plus 1 minus sine theta, let's say, then it would be the x-intercepts would be your solution here. So the points of intersection, the x values specifically of the points of intersection, or the x-intercepts, if it's one single equation you're trying to solve for like this, then uh, yeah, it's the same as what we've done up to this point. Uh, you can also graph them on graphing technology if you have that available and then find the intersections that way. Um, and uh, if you have to do it by hand, you can, you can carefully uh, sketch and uh, graph and then uh, find out where the intersections are. So this, this might be our, our example here. And so you'd have an intersection point right there. Whatever that X value is, is your solution. Okay. All right. So that's chapter five uh, in a really quick review nutshell. Uh, I hope that you're able to uh, put some time in studying for your exam coming up or your evaluation coming up. And uh, yeah, sinusoidal functions, characteristic sine, cos, and tan. And uh, make sure you get your homework done. Go over those uh, real world problems. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I pray your exam goes well.